Crude oil, also called petroleum, is an unprocessed oil found deep in the ground. It forms naturally from decomposed prehistoric plants and animals. The colour can range from clear to black, the consistency from very watery to very thick. But it's always expensive when it hits the pumps. Oil companies who drill wells install pumping units to draw up the fluid that contains crude oil and salty water. This oil field in central California, USA, has 6,000 producing wells. The pumping units can run 24 hours a day. Here's what goes on inside the well. With each downstroke, the pumping unit pushes a steel rod down the steel tube lining the well. With each upstroke, the rod rises, and the pressure difference between the fluid on the outside and the fluid on the inside opens a ball-shaped valve, plugging the bottom, letting the fluid flow up the tube. Another valve at the top releases the fluid out of the well. To drill a new well, workers first erect a drilling rig at the side, then hoist a giant pipe with a drill bit on the end. They feed this drill pipe through the centre of a spinning disc, called a rotary table. As the table turns, the drill pipe turns, its weight bearing down and boring a hole through the ground. Once the drill pipe descends its full 9 metre length, they connect another pipe. The process is repeated with subsequent drill pipes until they bore into the reservoir containing fluid. Throughout the drilling process, they pump a mud mixture down the drill pipe. It comes out the drill bit at the end, hits the bottom of the hole, then backs up to the top. This process brings back the drilled out rock. After lining the well with a steel tube to keep the walls from collapsing inward, they mount the pumping unit and install the valves we saw in the model. The pumping unit pushes the rod up and down through the wellhead at the surface. As a safety measure, workers take readings to check the air for any hazardous underground gases that may be exiting the well. Once they determine the area is safe, they draw a sample of fluid to test the well's water to oil ratio. The typical ratio is 90% water to 10% oil. The fluid from each well exits via a pipe, and the pipes from all the wells feed a main line, leading to a gas removal vessel. The fluid contains carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide and natural gas, which has to be extracted. They naturally rise to the top of the vessel and exit via a pipe which runs to the company's gas treatment plant. There, equipment removes and treats the hydrogen sulfide, transforming it into sulphur, which a local farm buys to use as fertilizer. The natural gas and carbon dioxide, meanwhile, are piped to another area where they fuel the company's steam generator. The generator boils the water extracted from the fluid to produce steam. The company injects steam into the wells to heat the fluid, thinning it so that it flows faster. Once gasless, the fluid is piped to the treatment plant, which extracts the salty water. In this big tank, appropriately called a free water knockout, the separation of oil and water happens naturally, the oil floating to the top. To speed up that process, they add a chemical called an emulsion breaker. The extracted water exits via a pipe leading to the steam generator. The oil goes to a clarification tank in which a chemical process filters out sand, which the fluid brought up from the reservoir. By the end, when the ratio is 98% oil to 2% water, the crude oil is ready to sell. Built-in meters give instantaneous water content readings. As an additional quality control measure, the company also draws samples for analysis in its own lab on site. In fact, they test throughout production to ensure sufficient water is being extracted at each phase of processing. Companies buy crude oil as a raw material for producing petrol, asphalt, plastics, crayons, perfume and many other products. So there you go, yet another refined report from how it's made.